Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, Amanda Grace here. We are here with a very special guest. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn will be on with us in a few minutes discussing his new book, Return of the Gods. I'm 100 pages in. Here's my bookmark right here. I'm 100 pages in, and it is an incredible read. And we will have him in in a few minutes. I'm going to open up in prayer as we always do. Welcome to everybody coming in. At the end, we're going to take, he is gracious enough that he's going to take some questions uh, from the viewers in the chat. So that is, get your questions ready now uh, to put in the chat when we prompt you to do so. Grace the Dove is out, so she may make a, a guest appearance also on the back of my chair. We'll see. So let us just kind of slow the chat down, humble ourselves before the Lord and begin. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, we come before you. We praise you that you are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your name. Father, we humble ourselves before you this day, asking, Lord, that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives, so you, your power, and your will become more in our lives. We acknowledge you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to the earth, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the Passover lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. He willingly went to Calvary. He willingly was beaten, bruised, crushed, and pierced for our sin and iniquity, Father God. Father, when he said it is finished, we were redeemed. We were purchased that day back to you, Lord. We praise you. He rose again in three days, ascended back into heaven, and has been ruling and reigning at your right hand forevermore, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit, Father God, to fill this place. Lead and guide us, Lord, in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Father God, we just pray by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God. May only the truth and power of almighty God with authority come forth in Jesus' name. Father, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter. We are merely the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith. Without your breath of life in us, we don't have life, Lord. And we give you all the praise today in the precious name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen and amen. 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 I always like to start off and pray. Just give it over to the Lord immediately. I find it goes so much better. Just let him lead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play for you the book trailer to Return of the Gods. And then we are going to have Rabbi Jonathan Khan with us. So if you will bear with me for just a minute here, we are going to play it. And I, ha I have to say, I watched the trailer. It's pretty incredible. I think you're going to enjoy it. And here we go. Is it possible that behind the events, moments and changes that are transforming America and the world and affecting our lives is a mystery? Could this mystery go back to ancient times, to the incense offerings of ancient Rome, the processions of ancient Babylon, the tablets of ancient Assyria, and ceremonies of ancient Sumer? In his most explosive book ever, Jonathan Kahn pulls away the veil and reveals these shocking and astounding secrets. The Return of the Gods by New York Times bestselling author Jonathan Kahn is so astonishing and revealing that no description here can possibly do it justice. Could there be more to the news and what's happening in the world than you see with your eyes? The Return of the Gods by Jonathan Kahn will take you into an entirely new realm of mystery. You will be taken on a journey from the temples of ancient Mesopotamia to the halls of the American government to uncover the mystery of the gods. Who are the gods? What exactly are they? And is it possible that these ancient entities have returned to the modern world and specifically America? And are they right now transforming our culture, our lives, our children, America, and the world? Did this mystery even determine the rulings of the Supreme Court and the exact dates they were handed down as their ancient sign appeared all over America and the world? Did an ancient God actually manifest on the streets of New York City? What is the Dark Trinity? Who was the possessor? the Enchantress, the Destroyer, and the Transformer. Where is all this heading? What does it have to do with you? And what do you need to know in view of what's coming? Prepare to be blown away as you open Jonathan Kahn's most explosive book ever, The Return of the Gods, from Frontline, available online and wherever books are sold.
Now, if that doesn't get you curious, I don't know what will. And without further ado, let's bring in Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Welcome. Where was the church two thousand years ago? It was great to be with you. I, I've never been. I've never been in a situation where I heard the birds praying along with you. That was wonderful. They, can I tell you, every time I open up in prayer and the presence of the Lord comes in, they all start to sing, especially yeah. the dove. Above yeah. all, the dove. Yeah, I noticed, all, particularly when you were praying. So it's great to be with you. Great to be with you, Grace. And, I, you know, I will tell you, Rabbi, that, and I told you this off camera, that I'm, I am way into this book now, and it is absolutely riveting and amazing, and it connects the dots uh, in a very interesting and unique way, taking you back to biblical times and particularly how Israel was tempted. I also have down here books by JonathanKahn.com. You could go there to get your copy of Return of the Gods, The Harbinger, and the other books he has authored. So let's begin by asking you, what does the Return of the Gods reveal? Yeah, this, this, Grace, this has to be the most explosive book I've I've ever done, and I've done explosive books, but this one is really, as you kind of use the word connected the dot, mm -hmm. you know, this is really the mystery behind everything that's happening in our culture, what's transforming it, what's happening to our children, what's happening in the media, what's happening uh, in the Supreme Court. I mean, everything, and everyone who's watching this, or everyone who's hearing this, or everyone who will read it is gonna is already affected by it. Every single person is dealing with these things. And it, it, could there be a mystery that goes back to ancient times, to the Bible, and to the ancient tablets of Mesopotamia? Uh, could it be behind everything that's happening? Could the could it go back to the gods, the gods that we hear about, you know, the these fiction, these myth, mythological uh, beings, could there actually be something real to them? Um, and, if, and if so, could there be entities behind them? Um, and if so, actually, what would happen if they returned to the modern world? What would happen if, if they returned to America? What would happen is what's happening. And could they be the actually the agents of culture that are transforming our lives uh, or transforming the world around us? Um, and if so, what do we need to know? What do we need to do about it? What, what do we need to know where things are heading and how to prevail? So the, that's what the return of the gods is going to open up. And it's, it's a mystery. It's not just to be blown away. It's a mystery to arm the, you know, I, I wrote it to encourage, strengthen, arm God's people. Because, you know, if you're in a fight and you don't know you're in a fight, you're not going to win. Or if, if you're, you're in a fight and you don't know what you're fighting against, you're also not likely to win. Uh, but the thing is that this is for everybody and also not only for each of us, but Everybody, no matter who they are, they have people in their lives who are deep, who are deep into this. And so I wrote the Return of the Gods not only for them, but for, for, for God's people, but also for the people in their lives. And I, I think it, that's the right word, arm and equip, to equip the body of Christ and expose the devices of the enemy because Paul says we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. And I believe this book begins to unveil and goes deep into that. So what is the mystery of the spirits in this book? Because they have names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> the, if, if, if we lived back in Bible times, ancient times, the whole world was filled mm -hmm. with gods. It didn't matter where you were, from Russia to Hawaii to Africa, everybody mm -hmm. Behind the gods, when they were worshiping these gods, they were actually worshiping these things called the Shedim in Hebrew. In the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of Psalms, the Shedim are, speaks of entities or spirits. So behind the gods are spirits. And when Paul, when he speaks about in, in Corinthians, he says that the, the pagans are worshiping these, these entities. The word he uses, the translation of Shedim, which is the word daimonia, we get the word demon or demonic. But actually, the, the ancient, uh, you know, the pagan nations, they called their gods demons, actually. It's, I mean, it's crazy. But so there are spirits behind the gods. So that opens up a whole other mystery, because if that's the case, then what happened to those spirits? You know, and, and, what, and, and could it affect us today? And that's what the return of the gods is, is revealing. Okay, so then what is the link to the spirit possession and the gods and pagan civilization? And can more than can possession affect more than just a person? Yes. Yeah. So the thing is that if if the behind the gods are spirits, dark spirits, 
then the, the then the thing is that if these nations or peoples were given to the gods, they were given to the spirits. If they were seized by the gods, they were seized by the spirits. So it's an amazing thing when you look at these cultures, you see the same signs that the Bible gives of possession, spirit possession. You see it throughout the culture. The closer you were to one of these gods, these quote gods, the, the more likely you were to have the signs of possession. You know, the high priests and priestesses, uh, the oracles, they all shook and trembled and, and babbled and foamed. And th these were all the signs of a possessed person. But it wasn't just a possessed person. You know, it's, entire cultures can be possessed or, or cultures can be influenced. And so when you look at the ancient world, it's actually that's the case. These entire civilizations, pagan civilization is possessed. They're seized by the spirits. Even Western civilization, you know, you know, we come from Western civilization. Well, back then it was possessed by the gods and the spirits. So then they obviously dominated for a period. And then what caused them to depart? So they obviously at some point they got kicked out yeah, of yeah, their that's areas. Good. That's a good <laughs> they got evicted. I'm saying I've never heard anybody say that's a good way of saying it, but that's exactly true. <laughs> uh, the thing is that, yeah, what happened, you know, and, and listen, there are still some pagan cultures where you have this, but the thing is what happened to the world, what happened to the West, what happened to much of the world is Jesus happened. And the Lord happened, Yeshua happened, he came. And he and he not only did he have the power to kick out or to, it's called ekbalo, which, you know, to cast out, but he sent the gospel, the word of God into the world, into the pagan world. So the apostles are going into the pagan world. So it's a clash. It's God on one hand and on one hand, and then the gods on the other. You have the you have the spirits, but you have the spirit of God coming into it. So you have a clash. And that's why when you read the book of Acts, you see. You know, it's a clash of spirits. You see, you know, this this possessed girl follows, stalks Paul until she, he casts it out. Then there's an uproar. Then in another city, there's an uproar. They want to kill the disciples because they think they're a threat to the gods that they're that they're lifting up. When the Roman Empire was persecuting Christians, the issue wasn't it wasn't ideology so much. It was the gods. I mean, they said if you worship, if you will burn incense to the gods, we won't kill you. And so that's why they were thrown to the lines. They said, no, we won't. And so it was a clash of gods. And in fact, the great persecution of Dio, this emperor Diocletian, the greatest persecution of Christians under Rome was started by this oracle, this woman who was basically possessed. And she said, she's speaking for the, the gods. oracle of Delphi, right? Yeah, well, that, the oracle, oracle of Delphi, Delphi was the big one. Well, she, yeah, she was the big one. And okay. then there was there were other ones. The oh, Oracle okay. of Didymus actually gave this word to this emperor and started the persecution. So a woman who's possessed by spirits started the persecution. But in the end, the power of God is stronger. The power of God, the power of the gospel was stronger and overcame. And so what happened is the gods, as you said, and this is probably the only interview I'm saying it, but maybe I'll take it with me. The gods were kicked out. You know, the you know the, the <laughs> temples of Zeus were abandoned. The temples of of, of Poseidon and, and Athena were gone. They, they, they just left them. But it's not just that, because it's not just gods, it's spirits. So if there are spirits behind the gods, that means it was the greatest exorcism in human history, the mass exorcism of, of, of Western civilization, of, of Rome. You know, And so that's why the West is unique, because it's the only civilization that was so you know, exercised. It was, it was, they were expelled. It was, they were cast out. The demonic spirits. In fact, everywhere the gospel goes, that's what it does. And so, so that's what happened. But here, the thing is, but then that brings up something. What happened to those? What happened to the spirits? And, you know, gods can go, but spirits don't die. So what can I, and what would happen if they returned? And, and if they would return, how, how would it happen? Because actually, Jesus gives a warning that's about us right now. You know, interestingly enough, this reminds me uh, of a, a, another account in the Old Testament where a woman was possessed uh, by a god and persecuting the people of God and tried to kill Elijah. Yes. And then the showdown on Mount Carmel happened yes. and the prophets of Baal are executed. This kind of reminiscent of this biblically. Yeah, yeah you are totally, totally, uh, totally right. That, and that's kind of where we are now. You know, we are in those days. But yeah, Jezebel was actually, according, not only she was into, you know, she was pro pushing the gods, Baal and all, all the gods of Phoenicia, but also her, the, according to the historical records, her father was the high priest of
like in the temple. So yes, this is a possessed woman, and 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 we're kind of we're seeing we're seeing this uh, similar signs in our culture today. We are now. There are um, certain gods, and you have names for them. Uh, that have transformed and disguised themselves in a way to come back and invade this culture and this time. So let's start off. Uh, yeah. Who is the possessor? So the possessor yeah, well, let, is the first. Who the yeah. Well, let me let me um, give give a warning that Jesus gave that will we'll kind of like I think it'll put it all together and then and then we'll, yeah okay. then that what you know he tells a parable and people you know people know the parable but they don't really get the full thing of it. He said, he said, if a if a spirit comes out of a man, it, it wanders the desert and finds no place. He says, I'm gonna go back to the house from which I came. He's talking about the man, it's his house. Comes back to the man, finds it clean, the house is swept clean, you know, it's empty. Goes back, gets seven more spirits, more evil than itself, and comes back and repossesses the man. And so at the yes. end, you know, Jesus said, Well, the well, the 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 last state of the man is worse than the beginning. But people think that's just talking about a man. It's not. At the end, he says, so it shall be with this generation, not just a man, but a generation. And when you take this principle and this really it's to the highest or to the to the to the widest scale, it becomes a, pro a prophecy and a warning. And that is this, you know, that the Western civilization was delivered. It was exercised of all these spirits, these gods. But the warning is, if we ever... If, if the West, if America ever turns away from God, if it ever becomes an empty house, empties God, it's not going to stay empty. But the spirits that were cast out in ancient times are coming back to it. The gods are going to return to the world and specifically to America. And if we want to understand what's been happening to America in the last 50 years or, or so, what's been happening, it's this. When the gods come back or the spirits come back, they come back to possess or repossess a culture. They come back. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, these are pagan spirits or pagan gods. And so they come back, but they're coming back to a, quote, Christian civilization. So this is like this creates a, a whole new thing. Their mission is to take a, a Christian or Judeo-Christian culture and turn it into a pagan one. And that's exactly what has been happening to America. It's being possessed. And that's why it makes no sense. It's like, this is so crazy. How can they do this? How can they do that? It is a possession that we are watching. And so having said that, then you ask about, you know, about the, the gods. Well, which gods? Yes. You know, which ones? Well, yes. you know, I looked at, at the gods that when Israel turned away from God, they turned to specific gods. And there's three main ones. And I in the, in the Return of the Gods, I call it the Dark Trinity. And the first one is called the Possessor, because that's what his name meant. You know, his name in Hebrew, Baal, means the Possessor, the Master, the Owner, the Lord. And so he is, you know, we know him, you know, Christians know him as Baal. But he's called, mm -hmm. the, he is the Possessor. And so who is who is who was he and what did he do? Well, what he did is he was the one who really turned Israel away from God. He's the one that that becomes the substitute God. He's the God who promised them uh, fertility and prosperity. Just turn away from God. So he's the God of their fall. Well, what? Well, here's the thing. If America opens the door, then not only these gods are coming back, but this God is going to start. He's like that first spirit that comes back to the house. Then says, I'm going to bring my friends. So amazing. When do you see like the, the turning of America? Well, you see that yes. most, you know, most dramatically begins in the early 60s. We start taking prayer out, you know, out of school. Out. particularly, listen, you know, you're like, oh, it's just a little thing. We'll just take prayer out of school. No big thing. Well, we were taking prayer out. We're taking God from our future. These are the children. So this is what happened. At that same moment, this, the, 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 the spirits begin to return and they start to change America. And that's what's going to happen. And so they come in, and this one comes in, and what does Baal do? What did Baal do? He drove God out of the culture of Israel, like one step, like think about Jezebel, drove God out of everything. Well, there's a spirit that has come into America that is driving God from that moment on, 
driving God out of everything, out of the culture, out of the schools, out of the movie. You know, back in the 50s, the, the big movies were, were Ben-Hur and and uh, the Ten Commandments and great, Greatest Story Ever Told you know, or, or, or King of Kings. You know, all these things. Now look at what happened. You know, God was driven out. And so when you drive God out, it's not going to stay empty. Dark things are coming in. And so the other thing that Baal did, the Bible says, is he caused Israel to forget God. Well, this spirit has been causing America to forget God. Mm -hmm. God, Baal, he caused Israel to turn away from the commands of God. Well, what's been happening to America? We've been overturning God's ways one after the other. And it, this spirit has literally caused us to strike down the Ten Commandments from public view. I mean, it's crazy. So we this is we are right now in the process of paganization. And when you when you want to look at what what is all paganization because it's the spirit of Baal. Now, yeah, it, well, you know, it's interesting because you know it says in the Word of God, and they turn their heart after the Baals. They turned away from God, and they turned their heart after the Baals. Their heart turned first. Israel's did. Now, did the sign of the possessor appear in America? Yeah. Well. Well. First, yeah. There, there. First, there are many ways in which we don't even realize this. This. This principality has been affecting everything. Um, example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in pagan culture. Well, actually, in, in in monotheistic culture, there's one God, one truth. You know, pagan culture is not like that. Pagan culture, you have many gods. So you don't have one truth. You have many gods. So we've been moving from one truth, one God, to many truths. That's why you'll hear, oh, well, that's true for you. You know, that's true for you. That's my truth. That's your authentic truth. You know, if a man says, I'm not a man, I'm a pineapple, well, that's his authentic truth. You know, <laughs> if a woman says, I'm not a she, I'm a they, well, that's her authentic truth. You know, that is paganism. You know, in paganism, you actually, you create your own idol. The idols, so you're actually creating your own truth. Well, that, you know, when you talk about wokeism and all the stuff that's taking over our culture, that is this. This is a pagan thing. When you take out God, these things come in. But I'll give you an, I'll give you another example. You know, you, you said something interesting. You said they follow, you didn't just say they followed Baal. You said they followed the Baals because there were, there was one Baal, but he manifested in many Baals, you know. And so what, and the word Baal means master. So what happens when you turn away from God you know, they, they promised, you know, they said, oh, it's freedom. You know, but you end up, bail means master or, you know, it's basically a slave driver. Now we are captive, America's captive to many bails. You know, it's, it now it's, you know, it's the bail of addiction. It's the bail of substance abuse. It's the bail of, of pornography, the bail, you know, that we become more, more, you know, uh, in bondage since this. But also let me, let me give you a, a an example. You know, the, um, the, 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 the Bible says that, that when they turn away from God, they start making idols and they start serving the idols of their hands, the works of their hands, they start serving. Well, when Paul was on Mars Hill and he's speaking about idols and, and the pagan world, he uses a word in Greek, the word is techne. We get the word technology. We get the word high tech from it. And so he's using this, so, so put it together. What's gonna happen is we, it's not, it's not that technology is bad, but if you turn away from God, then you're going to end up serving your own technology. In other words, people are going to become addicted to computers. They're going to be they're going to be like an appendage to a computer, which is what's happening. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that th those who make these idols, they become like them. So what's happening is they make the idol in their image. So so what's happening is that people as they're glued to their computers are becoming less and less human. You know, they're becoming more like a computer. And the computer is becoming more, more taking the powers of, of humanity, you know. So it's amazing. AI. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and let me let me give you a, a very specific one. You know, the sign of Baal in ancient times was was the sign of a bull, a molten bronze, massive bull all over the place of the Middle East. Well, could the sign of Baal ever appear in America? It already has. Yes. Go down to New York City, go down to where the harbingers are, it's the south part. You'll see. The sign of Baal. You'll see the massive bronze bull, molten bull. This is a biblical sign. The people that didn't had any idea they were doing it, but it, this is a massive sign of Baal of a culture, spirit of Baal, and a, it's also a biblical sign of a culture that has once known God but is now turned away. Think of the golden calf. Think about all those molten, molten things. 
so it's happening there. And and the other thing is, I won't go into it because there's so much. I'm just we're just giving a taste. But but actually, in New York City, I was there. I witnessed it, where where the government officials actually had a ceremony around an object of bail in New York City. And we actually, yeah, actually. Actually played the music of Bale. Actually had you know uncovered it, made up you know it was based. And we were it was, it was. But this is this is real. We have been America is being possessed by the spirit, and this spirit is the first one. I mean, we're only giving a taste of it, but he opens the door for the next one of the dark trinity because it's not just one. Yes. You know, you know he says I'm going to bring my friends, and and everybody's going to. But when we talk about it, everybody's going to recognize it. Yes, and he opens the door to someone named the Enchantress. So who is the Enchantress? Yeah, this is a, obviously this is a she. And actually, this was the mm -hmm. wife of Baal. In, in Canaanite mythology, she's the wife of Baal. But she's all over. This one is, a, this one is, this this god is in the Bible. She's called Ashtoreth. You know, it's a, it always says Baal yep. and Ashtoreth or Baal. Well, well, in 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 uh, Babylon, she was called Ishtar. You know, we've heard of those names. Yes. In 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 Greece, she was called Aphrodite. You know, this is all the same deity, and and she's dark. She is the goddess of sexual immorality. She's the goddess of unbridled sexual passion, um, and she sexualizes a culture. And in pay, you look at the pagan cultures; they're all sexualized. But so she's coming into this Judeo-Christian culture. But notice something. First comes Baal in the Bible, then comes Ashtoreth. Well, look at what happened to America. First came the turn, the turning away, Baal, the turning away, early 60s. Then what happened? Then we would expect what would we expect? If she comes in, we're going to expect there's going to be a revolution in sexuality. What happens? The sexual revolution happens. And what is it? It's the turning over of biblical values of sexuality and replacing them with pagan sexual values. That's what's happened to America. It all began in the 60s. It has not stopped since. So she now she's also called the harlot or the prostitute goddess. And think about that. What does a prostitute do? A prostitute takes sexuality out of sex out of marriage and she puts it into the culture, puts it into the marketplace. Well, what's been happening to America? It's been, sex has been taken out of marriage, it's been put into the, the culture, become sexualized. And she actually, this this body actually wars against marriage. And look what happens from the 60s. Marriages start being destroyed, broken marriages, broken homes, broken children. That's all the sort of it. That's Ishtar. That's what she does. And the thing is that here's another thing. You know, back then, you know, she's called prostitute. In Greek, they called her, the word for prostitute is porne. They called her porne. We get the word porn. Pornology. Pornology. Yeah. From this goddess. Actually, this goddess. This spirit was actually the inventor of pornography back in Mesopotamia. She invented pornography. So now you comes an explosion of pornography. She's using pornography to seduce a culture, to destroy a culture, to seduce it from a, from a biblical, you know, morality to a pagan morality. And there's so much with this one. In fact, in fact, not only, well, go ahead. I have done saying too, saying a lot. Oh, go on. No, no. If you were going to finish your thought, because... Well, well, I'm kind of well. The thing is that even even the word, you know, we think of the word erotic. You know, our culture is eroticized. Well, that word comes from yeah. the, Greek, the Greek Greek word eros. Eros was was a principality that was the child of this goddess. So this goddess actually gives birth to, to er, er, erotica, gives birth to porn. I mean, it's crazy. But and she even gives birth to. I'm kind of moving forward, but she gives birth to the occult. She was the, she was a sorceress. And so at the same moment that the sexual revolution happens, there's a revival of witchcraft, of the occult, you know, new age, tarot cards, you know, astrology, yeah. all that comes same time, you know. And, and so she was she was this goddess and she's also the goddess of of um, intoxicating substances. So what happens at the same time in the 60s? Drug drug explosion. We're still in it. We're still in all these things that's not stopped. She is the great enchantress, the great seductress. And she is now you know, doing it to America. I always say, you know, especially even when you go into a wine and liquor shop, they're not called spirits for nothing. They're not no. called spirits for nothing. You know, you've got, there's a reason for this that should click with everybody who is watching this. And it seems it was a, a trifecta of sorts going on in the 60s happening and we'll get into the third part 
which is the sacrifice part in a little bit. But you had the you had the the prayer taken out of schools. You have the, the revive. You have the sexual revolution. You've, it's really four parts. You've got the reviving of the occult, and you've got the fourth part, which we'll get into in a little while. Um, but what does she have? What did she begin to do besides reviving it in the '60s? Because I think drugs and the occult go together. They go hand yeah, in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because we, you know, we used to. They used to say, and they still do, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, and and so yeah, and and with and with with and and, and with the occult as well. With this guy, actually, you said something very interesting. You said you said spirits and and these places where they have. Ayla. Well, she was the goddess of the ale house. I mean, literally, the, the the bar was her like a temple for her. So yeah, and yeah. and really, what we see today, what we call a cult, is basically pagan religion. If you take pagan worship, pagan religion, you know, and you put it into modern times, it's the occult. You know, fortune telling, you know, soothsaying, you know, you know, astrology, all that's from there. So all that, you know, all that's from there and from this one as well. So she has literally, I mean, literally transformed everything. I mean, think about this. This has broke, this has changed marriage. This has changed family, you know, and it all happens, you know, like, like clockwork. First comes Baal, then comes this enchantress, you know, to this day. Yeah, Baal like opened the gate. Yes. He opened the gate and yeah. said to everybody, come on in. All his yeah. all his uh, demon friends, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, come on in to America. Yeah. And it's and it's yeah, it, it was the turn. Once you turn away from God, that's it. All, all hell breaks loose. You know, think about it. You know, you, you mentioned with prayer out of school and, and what it led to. Look at what you know, the, the Jesus said the house is not remaining empty. So if you take God out of the house of school, what's gonna come in? Look at what's coming in now to school. It's dark. Oh, it's, it's it's that and we and, you know if we had known this like we you know I don't know if we were even if we were all even alive at the time but if we had known this when this was happening when this was let's just take this out let's just take that out we we, we could have seen by what the Bible said this was all going to come to this. It was and also you've got now we we're going to go to the third part of this unholy trinity which is the destroyer which is probably i would i would vouch maybe one of the most wicked yeah of them all is the destroyer so let's talk about uh the destroyer he he was kicked out yeah. that's what he yeah. kicked out. now yeah. he's returning how how did yeah. he return yeah well well the first yeah who's the, the destroyer well the destroyer is the god or principality that causes parents to offer up their own children as sacrifices if you live yes, in pagan times, it, yeah, if we were if we were there in biblical times, yeah. this is not uncommon because this is pagan. You know, pagan, you got human sacrifices and you have child sacrifices. If you were a child back then, you're in trouble because the pagan pagan world did not treat you well. And you know, anybody who's weak, it doesn't treat well. So th they were actually offered up. And so the only thing that stopped this, the only thing that stopped child sacrifice is the gospel is the power of Jesus. That shows you how real and how right God is. It's what did it. When you, but when Israel turned away from God, what did they do? They started offering up their children as sacrifices. So here's the here's the warning. Jesus said, if you turn away, you, you know the thing goes out empty, something else is coming in. You take God out, something else is coming in. So the destroyer is gonna come back. The, the Moloch, the destroyer is coming to America. And that's exactly what happens. I mean, like clockwork, first, First Baal turning, then the sexual revolution, the goddess, and then we come to child sacrifice. End of the 60s, 1970, we intro America introduces abortion on demand. We are now killing our children. And you know what? It's not, and you know, people say, well, you know, how can you compare it? Well, actually, abortion and infanticide went together in the pagan world. They were all part of the pagan world. It's all part of the same thing. And the thing is that that you know killed thousands of children. You know what? We have killed over 60 million. Remember what Jesus said, when they come back, they come back worse. When the spirits return, they come back worse. Well, we have killed millions. And the thing is, I won't go into it, but the thing is that when I looked at the ancient, the rituals of child sacrifice, it's amazing because abortion today is following the same, the same pattern, the same way, the same everything is following according to what, and then think about it. Why did the, why did, would a parent offer up his, his, his or her child? Why? Because they were promised, if you do this, you're going to get prosperous. You're going to get blessed by the God. You're going to, it's going to, your fields are going to be blessed. You know, you're going to get money. You're going to get fine. Well, why are women told 
to do this now because they say the child's going to hinder you it's going to hinder your career hinder your success you're going to become you know you'll do this and you'll become prosperous and all that and it's the same thing it's the same spirit you know back then they burned them through fire we burn them with chemicals it's the same thing and, and you're, you're right this is the word this is demon this is demonic just like and, and like all this is pornography is demonic it's all demonic and it's all three all three you know gods working together in unison you know it is and it, it's like what you talk about that they have to transform themselves because they're coming back to deal with a different civilization than back in biblical yeah. times so what do they do they whitewash child sacrifice and they clean yeah. it up a bit and they package it a little differently to sell it and they kind of try to take the conviction out of it same yeah. way and this is what you get yeah say it exactly they can't come back saying hey we're the gods and we're going to destroy you you know we're going to do it they come back yeah. as in the name of tolerance of freedom of a, and they they still end up destroying they do now they, there is uh somebody named the goddess in this as well how did the goddess transform women and men and how is she doing that now well this is actually this is another side of, that has changed our our culture especially now the another side of this goddess because this goddess ishtar that we could call her um there was another side it said she said in the ancient inscriptions it says she says i am a woman i am a man it says in the ancient wow. hymn do this one yeah yeah you're gonna get to that when you read you're you're halfway you're gonna get to that in the book yeah it's, it's, it's the, the ancient hymn says this goddess this prince of spirit has the power to turn a man into a woman and to turn a woman wow. into a man and so what so look at that we want to understand what's happening this is what's happening if the, what's going to happen she's not going to show this at the beginning because this is too radical so the beginning it's you know sexual revolution but as it keeps going as she starts taking possession of a culture now she's going to start turning men into women Women is a man. She's gonna start. She's gonna start blur. She's the goddess who blurs the lines between male and female, a uh, man and woman. She merges them. Androgyny. You know, we think this is new. It's not new. This this is where it comes from. And so she comes back. And so she is possessing the nation. And literally, in every possible way, she's turning men into women and women into men. Transhumanism. Yeah. Well, it even goes to that too. And you want to understand what is. You want to understand what is happening in our culture. Let me give you an example. I mean, this is this. I mean, you can even you can almost cut this spirit in it with a knife. It's so thick in our culture. But the thing is that, for instance, let, let me do it the first way. You know, one of her things it says, and what I found, I put it in the book in the Return of the Gods. I found these inscriptions that she grinds away the masculinity of men. So, so what's she doing? First thing, she, she wants. Men. Yeah, she exactly. She has a. She, this this goddess literally has a problem with men can do that and, and if she ever had, whenever she has lovers they end up being destroyed or something goes wrong but she 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 rages against men and so what do we have in this culture we have a spirit that rages against men why it's kind of crazy what rages against fatherhood remember you know years ago they had a show called father knows best well forget that now now fathers are bumbling idiots i mean the way they're presented you know they're toxic masculine you know if a man is masculine he's toxic if a woman's masculine bravo they applaud that's crazy you know so we're we're seeing that it's grinding away the the it's against manhood you know it's taking men away from manhood away from fatherhood away from marriage away from you know you know, you know, addicting them to pornography, addicting them to their computer games, you know, and we have a whole generation, you know, and they're set and separating men from women. And then you have, on the other hand, it says that the goddess de defeminizes women. And so that's what she's been doing as well. It's saying to women, you don't, you don't need to be feminine. You need to be a man. You be like a man, you know, you fear. Mm -hmm. Want me to keep going? Oh, do you see We're me? We're here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's so yeah. funny. You were saying that, and it's like the enemy got angry and the whole thing. 
went yeah. sideways for a minute, but we're back. I'm going to say something that I don't say anywhere else. Um, when we were print, when this the Return of the Goths started being printed out, all the presses came to yes. a halt, and nobody could understand it at all. When I went to do the first television show in a studio, all the cameras went dead, and they couldn't understand it. So you know, this, you know, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. But but it goes further. Let okay. me let me go. Let, let me show you. The goddess yeah, actually had a, had a mysterious priesthood. You know what the priesthood was? It was men walking around her temple dressed up as women. That was her ancient priesthood. And so now, really, yes, exactly what her priests were: men dressed as women, and they walked. They were they were her people. And so, when you see this coming back into the culture, you know the god, the goddess is back. You know this is back, and we see it now in our culture. And it has never it's been out. It's been out of culture. It is now back in our culture. This is paganism, and it's back in there. And not only that, you know, back then, you remember what Jesus Jesus said? They come back worse. Back then, she did this to our priesthood. Right now, now she's trying to do it to an entire generation of children. She's trying to confuse them from the beginning. And make them make an entire generation her priesthood, and, and let, it even goes further. You, you know, we we think this is modern. Let me tell you, part of her priesthood, she actually tr surgically transitioned them. So they were men really? surgically transitioned to women. That yes, and so now she's doing it to a she's trying to do it to a generation. I'm, you know, telling them the whole culture is going crazy. You know, and we say, how could an adult, how could an adult ever surgically, uh, you know, destroy a child? What would possess them? The goddess would possess them. That's right. And that's where we are right now. And it's amazing. But every, you know what? It's like you were saying. Hey, it puts the, you know, it, it puts the, you know, the, connects the dots. It's everything, Grace. It's everything that's happening. It all goes to this. You know, it's interesting, too, before we get to the next part, because I know what this part is uh, that's coming that we're looking at. Um, if you go back to Genesis in the beginning, right in the garden, who hearkened unto the voice of the serpent first? The woman. It was the woman that hearkened unto the voice of the serpent. And then what did she do? She wore Adam down to eat it also. Yeah. Which in yeah. a way, if you look at it, is no different. Interesting, because uh, interesting because you could see a link with the goddess. Is the goddess is the one in a sense in our culture doing that? And it's all listen. Her 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 object. Her her mission is to destroy destroy men and women. Look what's happening now. We've got you know they said hey women you're going to be free you know be free you know and you know what now they're actually censoring the word woman. You know they're saying don't use the word woman. I it's know. birthing people. I mean, this is where it ends up, you know, but this is that goddess. She actually, you know, when you talk about the radical feminism who hate men, this, you can see it in this goddess. It's all there and they don't know they're being used. You know, each one it's man and woman are who are being used. Once you get away from God, you get away from everything. Once you get away from God, you get away from creation and you get away from your own being. You know, that's what happens. And the gods are always trying to take people away from their purpose. And that's how they destroy them. But it, it, now it goes even even more so now, you know, I mean, if you want to, you know, we, we can move forward if you're ready. Yes, gets, let's move forward because I think I know what this is. Yes. Well, there's a number of things. This, first of all, first of all, this whole movement that has changed the culture, you know, a lot of people don't know it began in New York City, like most of the, most of these things begin in New York City, it began in New York City. And it was actually, it was actually a riot in 1969. Um, and it was a riot. It was very small at the time, but it has changed the world. Um, it is. It is. It was called the Stonewall Riots. It was basically a bar. It was a same-sex yes. bar. It was raided. They. 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 They actually tried to to get into the. The police hid hid inside the bar. They tried to set it on fire. They tried to destroy it. Became riots. Stonewall Riots. Well. Well. From that, you have everything. The Pride Movement. Everything came from there. Well, the amazing thing. I won't go into a lot of detail, but it's amazing. It's in the book, but amazing. That on that night of Stonewall, all these signs of the ancient goddess start appearing on the streets of New York City, and, I, and I'll just I'll just give you I, I, I can just give you a taste of it. Um, for instance, yes. you know one of the signs of the goddess when she comes to when she starts warring, she enters into war is the lion the head of a lion, the lion's head. Well, actually, a lion's head was manifest that night 
but at Stonewall on that night of this of the happening. There was actually there's something called the dance of Ishtar, that the goddess in war, when she's destroying it, she goes into a dance. That night in the riot, that the people, a whole line of people start dancing and they start singing a song that that connects back to the ancient tablets of Ishtar. And they have no idea what they're doing, but it does. That night, there was a woman who triggered the whole movement. And that woman was literally was like it looked like an incarnation. Goddess and says you are stored. I now I'm getting, I'm noticing a little attack on the on the on the web, but that's a good sign. I don't know if you see it there. Oh, there it's is. A, and then I was looking at our signal, and our signal was okay. So I know this is coming. Yeah, it's. I went from, totally black. I went totally black on this side. You know, you know, even yep. you know, all the the whole movement, all these movements are linked to all those parades are celebrating so long. Actually, I found in the ancient inscriptions it says it calls the goddess. It says you are the goddess. You are the one who breaks the stone wall. The stone wall. And literally, they tried to break that thing down the day. So literally, it comes from the goddess, even that. And even the timing, even the time that it all happened, it happened linked to the goddess under the full moon of the goddess at, and the month of the goddess, at the time of the goddess. I mean, it's amazing. But it's all, I mean, I'm, and I'm just giving a taste, but it was all part of the mystery. Well, it looks you know, it, it's amazing how it all connects back to the, uh, the the pagan civilizations back in biblical times and what how it just thre it threads the needle almost like through the entire you know through the entire uh course of history and it yeah. even goes into parades parades yes. you would never yeah. think that parades i mean they do with it but what do the pra parades have to do uh with the gods in the modern world yeah well well you know every you know something strange has happened you know every year of the summer uh, the culture is kind of taken over by parades a month of celebration of of sexuality which is kind of very strange when you think about it it's happening all over um and the thing is that it's parades and so the this goddess was the goddess of parades and it says the people she makes the people parade before her and and, and it describes what are her parades the ancient tablets of sumer the ancient mesopotamian tablet says her parades are men parading as women women parading as men fulfilled with colors and sexual licentiousness that's what we have that is the same thing they were gone for about two thousand years but they're back but you know we think oh this is a new thing this is the return of the gods this is a actually a pagan phenomenon this is what they did back then and and also the you know the the goddess actually claimed one month of the year as her own where she actually possessed the culture one month but when was yes it? i look back at the ancient writings of of the early Christians, the Saint Jerome, and he identifies the month. And you know what he calls it in Latin? He says it was the month of Junium or the month of June. And so that is why the month of June is what it always was. You know, remember what Jesus said? Says the, the spirit goes back to his house. Well, the house of the goddess was June, basically. It was, it was that time. So she's come back into her house. And now June is going back to its pagan form. I mean, it's crazy. But it's all happening. It's all happening. Um, and so, and and the other thing is that there was a sign to the goddess. Yes. And you know what it was? Is that connected to the goddess? It was the sign of the rainbow. That is I was what. just thinking that before you said it. Really? I was waiting for you to say this. Really? Yes, I was. Well, it is. Real, I'm not why, kidding you. Really. <laughs> why is the rainbow spreading all over the culture? I mean, it's crazy. It's 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 taking everything. It's our American embassies have the rainbow instead instead of just the American flag have the rainbow. You go into a, a supermarket and you'll see cereal children's cereal boxes have a rainbow on them. It, you know I be you know all corporations have rainbow. Why it's be you know I will tell you that I won't go into it, but in the book there's a dark secret to the rainbow that happens to God. But but, but this goddess is actually well, a goddess who steals. From other gods and so she stole this it's it, it's in the face of god and the thing is that but in, but connected to the goddess it's actually in her mythology there's a dark secret to the rainbow and if people knew what this actually meant 
they would never, uh, they would never, or they think twice before ever, ever flying it, you know, but it all goes back to the goddess. It's no accident. You know, interestingly enough that she, she hijacked the rainbow and then she attached it to the word pride. She interesting that you said that because she was the goddess who was known as the goddess of pride. So now it's called mm -hmm. pride. And now the month is called pride. It's the month of the pride goddess. And I'm not, listen, it's I'm not saying that the people who did this have any idea. They have no idea. But but the mystery has a way of working through any, no matter what. In the book, I actually showed out every color of that flag is linked to the goddess. And actually, this is so big that it's even affected our Supreme Court decision. Supreme Court, let me, let me, I'll give you an example. You know, there are three major rulings of the Supreme Court that have actually changed marriage and changed sexuality. And they, one was in 2003, one was in 2013, the other was 2015, the, the changing of marriage. We all remember that day. But the, the, yes. first, ev the first one happened, they, they all happened on the same time of year, the, the, the month of June, the end of June, which is the last days of June, which is the time of the goddess, near the summer solstice, on the same day, June 26th, every single one of them happened on the same day. And that date is linked to the mystery of the goddess. And the thing is, it's all linked to the time of the goddess. And, and the, the Supreme Court is not trying to do this. It just did it. And the other thing is that, remember the day when marriage was redefined after thousands of years, the day that mm -hmm. the Supreme Court basically struck down marriage as we know it? Um, that night, the White House was lit up in the colors of the rainbow, if you remember that. Yes, I what, remember this. That's the sign of the goddess. In, th in this case, this wasn't this wasn't wasn't a godly sign. In that case, it was a sign of the goddess saying, "I own no. the White House now. I own the nation now." And the thing is that that night on the on the biblical calendar and the Babylonian calendar, the calendar of the goddess was it was the tenth day of Tammuz. The tenth of Tammuz. That's the day they said it's okay. Man will have men marry men and women will marry women. But the thing is. Uh, the, I looked at the ancient writings of the Babylonian calendar, and it says that day, the 10th of, of Tammuz, is that day is ordained to cast a spell to cause a man to love a man. That was the day that marriage was changed. Wow. You see, it, they, 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 they continue to do the same thing the gods just in a different way so it's the same all, all, the same points on the calendar they they've just reworked yeah. their approach yeah, yes the same and, you know if we, you know we don't have a, a long-term memory like 2000 years we weren't there but the christians there would have would have been able yeah. to tell us you know yeah this is what happens in june this is what happens here this is what happens and this is what will happen if you take god out it's all going to come back that's what it's at, that's what's going to happen Mm -hmm. So, which leads to the question, uh, do the gods or spirits pose a danger and are they now at war? The answer, the answer is yes and yes to that. Because the God, first yes. of all, they are, they are dangerous. They, they, they lead towards destruction. You know, that they always do. Look at what happened to Israel when they turned away, when they turned to the gods, they got destroyed, you know, and, and, and it was all part yeah. of it. They lean toward, they, they destroy those who get close to them. Um, and so they destroy a culture. Look, look at what they're doing. You know, a, a, an example, you know, you know, when, when, um, you know, when the, the thing about, you know, say women are going to be free now, you know, and now they're actually trying to destroy women. They're trying to take it there. It's a destruction. They're trying to destroy mothers. I mean, that's where it ends up. They don't tell you this at the beginning. They sell it to you, you know, with, with a rosy kind of, you know, a, a sales pitch, but then they destroy it. And so the thing is that, that think about this too, when they, they were kicked out, I'm using your words now without even thinking. They were kicked out <laughs> by, the gospel, by the gospel. So they were cast out. So what? So they have a, a vendetta against the gospel and against believers. Christians were the ones who cast them out. So now they're trying to cast Christians out of the culture. You know, the word of God cast them out. So now they're trying to get the word of God. They've been trying to get the word of God out of the culture because it's dangerous to them. You know, the gospel, the name of Jesus cast them out. So they're trying to get the name of Jesus out. And so they have a vendetta against Christians. That's why trying to. Trying to close down churches, close down ministries. 
This is the gods. So they actually have, a, there's actually, a, there's a war and we're in that war and we need to know it. It's kind of like the, the first, you know, it's like the, the early Christians. It was, it was the Christians versus the gods, you know. Well, that is now it's round two. We're back. It's back. It's round two. It's the end times. And this is back. So we need to know what we're fighting because if you don't know what you're fighting, you're, gonna, you're not going to win. You need to, and you need to know the power you have. So we're in that right now. And so their goal, part, their goal basically is to A, kick the gospel and the word of God out of the United States of America, yes, right? And, and what's the other goal? Yeah. yeah, well, to do that and their goal, also remember that the goal of the gods is always, at the beginning, they come in and they say, we're going to be really nice and we're just going to bless you and we're going to give you a little freedom here. Try it out. It's okay. You can have God on this. You can have God, but we're going to add this. That's how, it's, that's how it happens. That's how it starts. Toleration, everybody do your own thing. It's all good, right? But in the end, but as they start getting, to, as they, start, then you don't hear about toleration so much anymore. Now it's now they start trying to cancel out. They seek to it's cancel culture now. Now it's anyone who doesn't agree, we will cancel them out. That means whether it's conservative, whether it's Christian, you know. But it's Christian. But but the thing is, it, it starts out. What happened? You you brought up Jezebel and you brought up you brought up Baal. What happens? What happened in the days of that? What happens is it starts out, I'm going to bless you. It, it, in the end, it's now every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow to the gods. Every tongue will confess us. Every, every person will celebrate us. Every, everyone who doesn't will be, will, be re, will be taught, will be, will be given an indoctrination, or will be punished, will be deplatformed, will be sent. You know. So that's where we are now. So it's it, the idea, every single one, Baal, Ishtar, Molech, they were all seeking that every, it's it's totalitarianism. In, in the end, they're going to try to make everyone agree. And that's where we are. And that's why it is so crucial to what we do right now. Because we, because you look in the Bible, Elijah was dealing with this. Moses was dealing with the gods. Paul was dealing with the gods. Most of them dealt with the gods. And so we are also to do that. There's a way to do that. And there's a way to overcome yeah, well, uh, absolutely, there is a way uh, to overcome it. And also, because we know we the word of God, it says they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's one of the ways we can overcome it. I mean, I know there's more to it than that. But where is this all then leading to? And where is, is there hope? If any, where's the hope? Yeah, well, there's definitely every <laughs> every book I've written, you know, it ends with hope. Um, and the thing is that, yes, yeah. first of all, where it's end, you know, when you read about the end times, you know, this is kind of this is the kind of the link. How do you get from here to there? Well, this is how mm -hmm. you're raising an entire generation to, for get to get ready for this. You know, the Bible says in the end times they will have they will they'll be unnatural affection. They will not have natural affection. They will they will persecute the people of God. So it's there. But the thing is that the hope is that first of all, you know, the last part of the of the return of the gods is called the other God, and it's about the power that we have. You know, there is no God. You know, when Moses crossed the Red Sea, he wrote a song. And the song in Hebrew says, goes like this. It's, we don't know the melody, but it says, Micha mocha be'elim Adonai. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Nobody like you. There's no comparison to Jesus and the gods. There's just no comparison to Jesus with anybody, with Messiah. There's no comparison with God. That we, have the old, we have the true living God, all-powerful, almighty. So the thing is, for us, this could be the most exciting time. You know, so many believers, I wish I lived in biblical times. Congratulations. You're there. These are biblical sure. times. These are the days. You know, and listen, you know, you know, we're not the first people to deal with it. It's, you know, it's been an exception that they haven't been around. But we are not the first people. Look at how Elijah dealt with it. Bold, power. Look at how Moses dealt with the gods of Egypt, the power of God. Look at how Paul dealt with the gods of Rome. Powerful, mighty. God is calling us for this moment. You know, a light in the daytime, you can barely see it. But a light in the nighttime lights up the world. We are to be the lights in the nighttime to light up the world. And the first thing is that if you have anything in your life, I'm talking to everybody listening, that you have a stronghold, like you have, whether it's pornography, whether it's you made an idol of something, you made a God of something, something's too, you know, you got to get that out of your life. You got to, you got to, because if you don't, that's a stronghold. So that you can't stand when you're dealing when you, you know, Gideon, what did he have to do? Gideon had to first knock down that that altar of Baal in his own backyard in order to stand. But then if you once you do, God's gonna empower you to stand like Elijah. 
stand. You know, you know, if these are the days of Elijah, they've got it. We got we're look, we have to be the Elijahs of the day. It's time to be that people. It's time to be bold, to be un, uncompromised, to stand no matter what. Let the chips fall where they may and be that people. So this could be the greatest hour, but you need the power of God. So stand, whatever you, un, without any compromise, put away the cups, yes. put away the altars. You know, I want to tell you something that there was a, uh, there's a person, there's a, in ministry, one of our associate pastors at Beth Israel. Um, and by the way, we're not far from you. We learned, we, we learned we're neighbors, you know, sort of with grace. We're pretty close. We're neighbors. We're yes. Close. Not bad. Yeah. And so we had, um, so one of them has a gift and he never, but he comes to me with the, we but he, but while I'm writing, I'm, I'm, I'm writing this book. He had no, I didn't tell anybody. Nobody knew what it was about. And he all of a sudden he's woken up and he has this, this thing comes on him and, and he's, he sees a vision and he sees, he says, Jonathan, I saw you bringing forth a word and I saw all these altars of these gods were there. And when the word came to the altars, the altars started to crack, break open. They started to break apart. And these spirits started coming out of the altars, like departing. Crazy. And then I saw revival. Then I saw revival. Now I want to tell you something. What, what is the what is the biggest altar we have of the gods, or the or the or the most blatant? It's abortion. We we literally kill children on that altar. Well, the day I finished the return of the gods was June twenty fourth. That was the day that the altar of abortion began to crack apart. The day. That the Supreme Court reversed it. So I believe that's in the Bible. When you have a cracked altar, it's a sign of revival. Back then, it wasn't tent meetings. It was that they cracked the altars. They said, "Oh, so there can be revival, but we have to be like Elijah's, you know." And God will empower you. I mean, whoever you are, God will empower you. Just do what you have to do. Be like Gideon. Take down that altar in your life to crack it open. You know, get repent of that thing, and God will empower you. This could be the greatest hour you've ever known and our greatest hour, but you need to stand strong for God. Amen. Praise the Lord. That It's so true, though. The high places, the altars have to come down first. They always do have to come down first. Always. Yeah. The altars have to come down first before revival can occur. Uh, Rabbi yeah. Jonathan, right. do you have time to take some questions from our audience? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll be okay. glad to do that. We wanted to let me just tell people if it grace. Let me just tell I'll just tell people because we didn't really but this is what it looks like. <laughs> this is what the, this is what yes. looks like. Um and, and it's available. Yeah, Grace has her copy. And it's available everywhere, wherever there are books, you got it. You know, whether it's every yep. Walmart, Barnes and all it's online right now. If you go to Amazon, you can get it. But I'm praying I'm praying you can get it right, you know, anywhere. Um but I'm praying that people don't just get it for themselves. Get it for people in your life who are in, who are basically deep into it, that they can be free. So not only, so get it for yourself, but it's, it's but but also for them. But it's not just you know to reveal this. You, you know we just we just touched on how much is there. It's it's there's a revelation. Revelation. Yes. I want to I want to strengthen you. I want to arm you so you can know what you're dealing with and you can overcome it. Praise God. You can also go to booksbyjonathancon.com to get your copy. And also, because we've done this with other books before, but I think believers need to be equipped with this. If you um, cannot afford to get a copy of this or you need someone that desperately needs it, please email us at hello at arcofgrace-ministries.com and we will purchase it for you and we will send it to you. And we will gladly do that. That is so sweet. So, that is so great, Grace. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Have, we're happy to do it. Do Praise the Lord. People, yeah. well, people need to be equipped right now. It's important that believers are equipped with the tools that they need and with the understanding. It's the knowledge of the truth that will set you free. So yes. this brings the knowledge of the truth is what it does. Okay. Yes. So I saw Deborah up here. She was asking, which is interesting, and maybe this ties to it a little bit, about the Statue of Liberty. Well, the Statue of Liberty has a lot of roots, like, you know, I mean, just like a lot of, a lot, actually, well, a lot of uh, the, the, the kind of, um, the art culture in America comes actually from pagan things, you know, um, in the Capitol, including the White House, including that, you know, um, but, and, and the, 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 
inspiration of the Statue of Liberty, there's a few inspirations, but some have seen in it the sun god or Helios or uh, ancient Greek and Egyptian gods. So some have seen that. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we can say it's Christian, you know, with that. But I'll, I'll tell you this, another kind of secret with that. And that is that that the, the United States Congress building not only has Greek enrollment, but part of it, um, it, part of it is actually linked to the Temple of Baal. How's that? That's amazing. It, it seems yeah. to all lead back. And this is interesting, too, from Kathleen. Is there a spirit attached to Halloween and is it attached to one of these gods is it attached to what was the last part one of these gods that we've been discussing one oh, of these yeah. gods is okay. this another way okay. there yeah yeah halloween halloween is definitely uh of pagan origin pagan roots the ancient samhain um holiday of the of the celtics um which is when th they believe the dead comes back and the spirits come back and you try to scare them away um, but but it's also and it's also a night of Satan worship and witchcraft. You know, you know, October third verse is one of the key days. It's a pagan. It's a pagan time. Now now, um, so can there be gods and spirits? So you know, the, the gods are spirits. Can, yes, they can be absolutely. I wouldn't. You know, I, you know, there there are Christians who will seek to redeem it and they'll give out the gospel and God bless them and they'll they'll do things biblically. You know, to do. It. You know, and that's one thing, but, you know, uh, to, you know, and so I'm, I'm, that's, 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 that's a whole, you know, you can either redeem it or you have nothing to do with it, you know, but I wouldn't get in the dark things of Halloween. I don't, I mean, why would we want to get into that? No, we wouldn't. Um, Hadass is asking, what about the Arch of Baal at various locations? Because it moved around the world to various locations, this arch. Yeah, the Arch of Baal. And I speak about this. I didn't, you know, we just touched, I speak about it in the Return of the Gods. Yeah, this is the arch through which they entered to worship Baal, literally in Syria. I mean, this was the actual from the Temple of Baal. And what happened is they 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 kind of rebuilt it in New York City. Interesting thing because they rebuilt it um, at the time of the of the election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, both of which who come from New York. The center was New York, and one of the key the key uh, um, issues of that election was abortion, which is linked to Baal. You know, Baal was into that whole thing. So that the first one happened there. And then, then it later appeared in Washington, D.C. And you know when it appeared? It appeared during the Supreme Court uh, hearings about Justice Kavanaugh. And when they remember, they were kind of tearing him apart. They were trying to stop it. Why were they stopping it? Because of only one thing, abortion. And as they were doing it, the Arch of Baal appears on the National Mall facing the Capitol Hill while they're doing it. I mean, so, I mean, it's, it's amazing the time and place to be very, very significant, you know, linked to paganism, linked to child sacrifice. Yes. Uh, and by and, the way, you know, you know I, I, I may have said it, but I was there when they unveiled that arch in New York City. Um, and it was, I mean, you know, it, it was, I mean, if I, I mean, we recorded it, but you have people playing, you know, pa pagan or Middle Eastern music, which you can picture with Baal, they made this big, gigantic thing that the, the, the leaders of New York were there. I mean, craziness. It, it is craziness. I mean, for that arch to show up at the timing it did, and then it hit the most strategic points worldwide that wow. it could hit because it was moved around the world. Um, yeah. and, and Somehow I had done this teaching where I took the arch and then I talked about build back better. It was like a connect the dots sort of thing. Yeah. And, and I had done it a while back. Uh, yeah. This kind of relates also. Uh, Rosanna wants to know, does the bronze bull on Wall Street relate to the worship of Baal? Oh, yeah, that's what I was. <laughs> that's what I was. Yes, I, I know. I wanted to... You know, that's good. No, it's good. We should be clear. That yes, the Bronx Bull uh, in Wall Street. That is the I, we're talking about a molten bronze bull. You know, and this is this is the absolute sign of Baal. And let me tell you something. Even though they didn't know what they were doing, they even linked it together because Baal was linked to prosperity. Like he promised fertility, your fields, prosperity. So what is the symbol of American prosperity as it turns away from us? A, what do we call a market that's a prosperous market? A, a bull, bull market. market. They talk about the bulls on Wall Street, where it's bullish on America. Bull, 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 bull. So even it's not only that you have you happen to have that the same the same actual you know idol, 
but also it's in the it's representing the very thing that Baal represented to ancient nations now to Israel. So it's all combined together. It is all uh, combined together. It really, it really is. I mean, people don't realize how much it's all interconnected until you begin to read this and connect the dots and see uh, just how it's like my my what a tangled web we weave. That's that's what the uh, the yeah. theme of this book is in a way. Yeah, and even and he, yeah, when you take God out, look what happens. You know, it's always going to happen. You need God. And even, you know, well, you know, people don't realize something like, you know, what happened to Israel when it turned away from God? It turned, when, the very first apostasy, when it turned away from the, the Ten Commandments, it turned to the golden calf. The golden calf wasn't just a golden calf. It was a golden bull calf. The Hebrew word means bull. So even that, it, you know, the bull is not only a sign of Baal, it's a sign of a nation that once knew God and has now turned away and given itself to the gods. That's America. This is the last question we'll take from the audience. Julie wants to know, do the three evil spirits in your book link to the Antichrist, the false prophet, and Satan in the book of Revelation? Okay, good question. I would say I would say this. It's interesting because, you know, when you read about the end times, it also says that you read about seducing spirits. And these ultimately all lead to the Antichrist. And, 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 and I'm, I'm throwing in something else, too. Notice, you know, there's this thing which is it's almost like totalitarianism, right? Everybody has to agree. Everybody has to say yes. And if you try to say anything, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. This is this is combining with the spirit of the Antichrist, which is going to be that, that every knee bows to him. So um, what I would say is that, you know, Satan is a is an imitator. He is he is a he is a, he is a substitute. He, he he does a false version. He does a he a, you know a fake version. So if you have the Trinity of God. You're going to have the enemy's going to make his unholy trinity. So, yes. The, so, so in the book, well, in the, in the book of Revelation, it is the, as you said, the, it is the, the enemy. It is the Antichrist and the false prophet, the trinity. And so here, when Israel was falling away from God, they had the false trinity, the dark trinity of God. So what I would say is it's, it's, late, it's connected together because the enemy is a, a hoaxer. He takes what is real and he makes it false. He counterfeits it. He is the father of lies. He is the chief counterfeiter. That's what he does. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And actually, well, think about what the gods are to begin with. They're counterfeits. You know, what what would yeah. a what would a spirit, we call them the Shedim or the demonic, what would those spirits do more than anything else? Well, they want to take the worship away from God. So they come as gods. I mean, and the thing is, it's real. We're actually dealing with it now. Modern times, it's back. We're dealing with it. We're all dealing with it. And, and you and you want to know what you're dealing with. Exactly. You want to know what you're dealing with. This book does just that, The Return of the Gods by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Once again, you can get it at booksbyjonathankahn.com, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. Everyone. You can also visit his website for Beth Israel, which is hopeoftheworld.org, right? It talks about Beth Israel there. Yeah, if, yeah, if, you, go to, if you go to hopeoftheworld.org, that's the outreach ministry that I do. Um, hope the world.org okay. and that is that uh you'll get you can get free uh, prophetic updates free cds you, all my teachings are there um and it's there, just hope of the world.org and you can get that if you're okay. ever in the area like grace is sort of in the area we just talked about it um the uh, the congregation i lead is the jerusalem center beth israel in wayne new jersey it's right it's about 20 minutes from new york city but we're there that's where most of these things began we're gonna. We are absolutely gonna take a trip down there. My husband flagged me from the side. He says, "I have one question." So we'll end sure. with this one question. Absolutely, I want it. Okay. Are the gods okay in your book? in his book? Yes. Are the gods in his book? Are spirits? There are they spirits? Are yes. they spirits, principalities, or the rulers of darkness? Is this what you're asking? What category yes. of spirit they are? Okay, yeah, definitely, de as you said, definitely spirits. And again, the Bible calls them Shedim in the Hebrew scripture, calls them the Daimonia in the New Testament, which is demonic, means demonic spirits. Um, well, they are powers. Um, they are principalities. Sometimes, you know, sometimes that, you know, um, and they are rulers. So, you know, you know, and actually some of their names, interesting, because some of their names, like Baal means Lord or ruler. Malek means king or ruler, you know, you know, so, so they are all, they, you know, they all, there are all those, you know, these are, you know, what I would say is, you know, when you talk about the gods, you're talking about some big spirits. These are not just, 
you know, these are not elves. These are not, you know, these are not these little things here. You know, they are, they are sometimes national, you know, or sup, you know, supernatural, you know, national. So they are big spirits. So, you know, rulers, principalities in high places, I would say that all yeah. goes together. And, and, the, and the God part is the mask they wear. Just like you said, Grace, that they, that in modern times, it's, you know, it's a mask. They're coming this way, but it's actually, it's the same exact principality. And we it warned, interesting because you said that, you said that, you know, it just struck this, you know, that scripture, you know, that uh, the other scripture of Paul, we war not against flesh and blood. We war against Man. powers, principalities, rulers in high places, you know, but we war against mm -hmm. them and we war with the power of God and we war with a helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit and the breastplate of righteousness. We war by the name of Yeshua and the blood of the lamb. By that, Amen. you can overcome everything. That's mm -hmm. right. Praise the Lord. And you know what's interesting too? That you you said the word mask and I immediately went to, well, what did they try to cover everybody with? So you said, oh, they came in wearing a mask and what did they try to do to everybody? in 2020 at the beginning right uh -huh. <laughs> they tried to mask them well Interesting, you know right? well you know we've taken the mask off and so and, and, with, and with the return Praise of the gods God. with the return of gods i'm taking i'm taking their mask off <laughs> amen. amen that gets an applause amen <laughs> their masks need to be ripped off honestly it's about time it's about amen. time Rabbi Jonathan Khan, thank you so much for joining right. us and for taking our viewer questions. Thank we you. so enjoyed this. We are going to come visit you too, though, in Wayne, Yeah, Jesus. just, we just come call down. ahead, you know, so we'll we'll make sure and uh, we'd love to do that. And you have you guys have a great spirit. You it's obviously, you know, you're you're real, you know, you're real sincere for the Lord, on fire for the Lord, and your heart is good. And also, you know, when the Lord uses you, you have insights that just come out, you know, and then take it into another direction. It was it was it was great to be with you. Great to be with both of you. And even great to be with your birds. They they uh, they like you. Let me tell you, they have been singing away since you came on. So <laughs> I've I've never had that. I've never had that in an interview, and I count that as a high honor. Well, we have fifty-four animals at our sanctuary. You would you would be quite amused, including a lamb named Moses who was born on Passover, who was rejected by his mother. Who came to us? If the Lord doesn't have a sense of humor, I mean, the Lord—it's just uncanny what happened. Oh but yeah, God. we have those stories all the time here. That's gonna—that's gonna stay with me. The Lamb called Moses. <laughs> actually, actually Moses sounds was like born on sounds, Passover. It sounds like it could be a book. <laughs> the Lamb called Moses. It just blacked out, so I don't see anything. <laughs> but if the enemy attacks, it's too late. If you see me, God bless you guys. I don't know if you see me, but I, God bless you. And we love you guys. Bye. Okay. We're here. I said Moses and it went out. Mm -hmm. No, maybe you gotta say Mo. <laughs> oh, I think we got lost. Yeah. Let me put it on here. We're here, guys. I think what happened is Rabbi Jonathan had to go, um, and he uh, because it went for a minute there. I think he thought the feed cut out, <laughs> but the feed did not cut out, uh, and so basically, but because we are having some weather here that uh we having some weather here uh we had to uh we come back on and just talk to you for a minute so let me just remove this and i hope you enjoyed this i really hope you enjoy this broadcast so and that you learned a lot from it and that you get the book you can also email us for return of the gods uh it is fascinating it is chock full of information and we're so glad he was able to give us over an hour, which was very generous of him. I'm so glad he said goodbye to everybody um, because we are having some strange weather over here. And so we were fine pretty much the whole interview till the end. So, but thank you everyone for joining us. Hopefully he'll come back on. Rabbi will come back on. 
Maybe we'll have our cable by then. If not, I'll do it from the other location. Um, but God bless everyone and uh, for joining us tonight. So that was that was something else, that interview. I'm going to put um, something up at the end here quick. Yeah, you, uh, you could go, yes, to booksbyjonathantacon.com to get uh, your copy of his incredible book. And also here, I'm going to put this up. This is Obey Organic Body Essentials, and they have a completely organic line of uh, body and health products. They have an elixir that is amazing, that if you feel yourself getting sick, you take two shots of that in a little bit of juice. It's got oregano oil, echinacea. It is chock full of incredible things. It's good. We've given it to Chris. We've given it to the staff. Um, it is called Elixir. Uh, it's got a gold label. Uh, we also, I use her whole face line. So her whole face care line. I use Vicky's line, so which is Obey, and it is incredible. It is all organic products. It is amazing for you and your face um, and your body. So you can go to Obey Organic Body Essentials, use the promo code GRACE as well at checkout, and I believe you get 10% off. So God bless everyone. Yes. Keep the faith. And uh, we'll be back on next week, unless the Lord says something pressing that we have to uh, come on, which I will if that happens. You know I will. We will be back on next week. So thank you for joining us. And thank you to Jonathan Khan, Rabbi Jonathan Khan and his team for joining us. And uh, armor up. Ephesians 6. Keep the faith. Get your copy. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful evening.